Good morning, everyone. How are we? Give a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. Good. Hi, how are you? Good. How are we doing? Great to see Good. so many of you back here again for week two. How was everyone's weekend? Hope everyone had a great weekend. Just got a couple more joining. We'll get started in a second. I'm just going to lock my screen here to me, hopefully. I've got my laptop down here. So if you see me down in the corner of the screen, it's not because I'm trying to hide. I've got a laptop here where I can see everyone. It's a bit hard to see on the iPad from a distance. Um, my laptop's a bit bigger screen, so I can give you guys some feedback. Awesome. All right, guys. Good morning. Um, hope you all had a terrific weekend. Uh, the, week, uh, the weather wasn't too bad, and, and obviously we had uh, Tommy's session uh, the ball on a string ball handling session for those that were able to join on on Saturday morning, um, which was a great session. Tom taught some uh, taught the sort of Alan Iverson crossover, which was really cool. How he built that up. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that and maybe gone away and worked on that, or you know maybe done some other skill stuff with you with your coach or, or with your teammates via Zoom and things like that, um, or just or just relaxed and didn't touch a basketball that's okay as well read a book or just hang out play some video games watch footy um so this morning we're going to do our the second week of our bounce session which is which is our plyometrics uh focus session working on our vertical leap um unfortunately for me i don't know about you guys but for me it's, it's a bit wet outside so i don't think we're going to be able to move to the actual dunking um, portion of today's session live on the Zoom. I, I won't be able to anyway, but if you guys are comfortable, it rained here where I am, but maybe um, you guys might be able to still get outside and uh, and, and lower your hoop and, and do some dunking. Um, I'm happy to, to supervise and watch that and give you some feedback, but I won't be able to do that part of the session. Um, I'll still talk you through it though, just in terms of reps and things like that, so that if the weather... But the sun is out and, and it's looking like it's going to be a beautiful day. Um, but the, the bricks in my front driveway there are probably just a bit too slippery with the, with the wet from the, the short rain we had before. So I, I won't be doing um, jumping out in the driveway, but if you guys have a court, you can. Um, and that's fine as well. Willow, if, you need to, if anyone needs to leave at eight o'clock, that's okay. Well, without the dunking session, without the outdoor portion of today's session live on the Zoom, I want you guys to still do it later, hopefully. Um, the session will probably only go for half an hour because we're just doing, we're just going to work through the program. So that's enough from me. Let's, uh, let's get up. Let's get our bodies moving here on a Monday morning. Uh, we are going to start with our dynamic warm up, same as last week. A lot of the exercises or, or all of the exercises will be the same as well. We might just build in, um, you know, build in a, 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 some extra reps and start to progress the movements that way. So our first Superset or our first warm up superset is skipping for 30 seconds. Now, if you're indoors like I am here, your skipping is probably just going to be our pogo hops, okay? Or you might have a line in the concrete or the carpet and you might want to do line hops, okay? Totally up to you. And then we've got our body weight squat, okay? So we're going 10 body weight squats. We're going to go 30 seconds of skipping in three, two, one. Here we go. 30 seconds of skipping. Everyone, let's get up and moving. We're getting that elasticity. So if you're skipping, we're bouncing. Don't let your heels hit the ground. So you can just see my feet here. Don't let your heels hit the ground. Got a message from someone. Oh, oh, oh my legs are sore from running 11 km as well. Wait, Colton, all right. Take it nice and easy, mate. If your legs are sore, you maybe just take it nice and easy. Okay, let's go. Three, two, one. Good. Okay, so straight into 10 body weight squats here. So again, we're sitting down on our imaginary chair. One, two, three. You guys do these at your own pace. Guys, if you are sore, if you've had something on on the weekend or um, you've injured yourself or you've hurt yourself, please feel free to let me know, just shoot me a message. And with this session, because what we're working is explosiveness, it's not gonna be, uh, heart rate, high heart rate all the time. Um, it will be a little bit for our warm up and certain things. It's important that you are fresh when you do plyometrics. So if you are really sore, feel free to participate in what you can. But if any of the movements are, you're not feeling as explosive as what you maybe should be, you might be best to just wait and rest today and then try and do it tomorrow or tomorrow night or whenever your body feels fresh again, because 
power is a is actually really it's like a neural quality it's it's about messaging from your brain or from your muscles to your brain and back and forth if your muscles are sore then part of that chain is is affected okay so uh that's our skipping that's our squatting let's move on now to our next superset really quickly we're going to do a skips for 30 seconds and then we're going to do some arabesques all right okay hunter you just be careful and okay so a skips so we can do this on the spot or you're welcome to move up and down the space whatever space you might have it's dependent on your area but i'm going to start with my right knee up my left arm up and we're just skipping on the spot with that knee drive so arm drive opposite arm to leg and we're doing that for 30, okay? Moving across the space. Look at the screen. No stress, Hunter, all good. So here, if we're moving across the screen, this is what it looks like. So we're just sort of bounding, but driving that knee up as we skip, staying on the ball of our feet, not letting that heel hit the ground. Again, this is warming up our hips, but also really good for jump and sprint technique. All right. That's good, have a rest there. Then we're gonna go five arabesques on each leg. So anyone that's done my sessions before, you know I love this movement. So I'll start on my right leg with my left knee up, similar position to how we started our A skips. And I'm just gonna tilt my body, chest pointing forward and kick my left leg back. Okay, so I'm on my right leg. I feel a bit of a stretch in my, my right hammy, okay? This right uh, left leg is staying active. Don't let it just drop down like that. Otherwise my back might round. So that has to stay really active. Swing through and up. Getting another little sun shower out here in Mornington. A kick and swing through. Five on each leg. Five on each leg. Swing back and drive up. Obviously a big part of this session is being able to go away and do the the sport specific movement. We'll still simulate some of the movements like our single leg jump. Um, we'll maybe just touch the roof or if you're in the shed, you can reach up and touch a cross beam or something like that. Um, but I still want you guys, I still think it's really important. I've just swapped legs here doing five on my left. Really important when the weather allows for it. If you can get out there and lower that hoop and still go through that final sort of 10 to 15 minutes of the session really important and just really fun <laughs> all right here we go last arabesque and then we're going to build into our session all right guys so first exercises we have we're going to go we're going to need our mat um, because we're going to be down on the ground for some core and for some activation so with uh yeah with our you know, uh, jumping and, and our vertical leap, it's extremely important that we are building up our core. Um, essentially, if we're talking about jumping in particular, that's okay if you don't have a mat, Izzy. Hopefully you've got carpet or something. You don't have to have a mat. I'll just say for those that are outside or that are in the shed, if you're on concrete, um, you might need a mat. Where's mine? So for our, for our core, it's, it's really important because essentially if we're talking about plyometrics and jumping, we're talking about our abilities, uh, our body's ability to produce force by applying force or absorbing force when we land and applying force into the ground, right? So that a lot of that occurs in our legs, obviously, that's a big part of it. But then it's, it starts in our core as well, which we've talked about our glutes and the importance of not only activating, but strengthening our glutes, but our core muscles as well. If I am weak in my core so if i'm weak in my lower back or my abdominals then there's a weak link in the chain okay so your body is like you got to think your body like a, a big chain of energy and if i'm applying energy to the ground and i go to jump and at the point where i'm about to take off and my core is weak and i come out of position and i'm arching or i'm rounding or my back sore i'm not going to be as powerful as what i can be so warming uh not only activating but also getting really strong through our core exercises is really important so we're going to do 10 glute bridges so come down i'm going to grab the computer here so you guys can just see me on the ground here so i've got my feet flat on the ground i'll move back slightly so i've got feet flat on the ground remember 
positioning is that your feet are close enough that you can tilt to one side and the other and touch the back of your heels. If your feet are too spread, I can't touch my heels here. And if they're too close, then I'm probably on my toes. So my heels probably aren't down, but I can also just touch them without really twisting. So we just want a nice flat foot. Every part of our back is flat against the mat. And from here, we're just gonna squeeze our glutes and push up. Knees to shoulders, straight line from knees to shoulders, come down. 10 of these in your own time at your own pace. 10 of these at your own pace. If you've already done 10, okay, some of our older athletes are in here this morning. If you've already done 10, take a rest for 30 seconds while I'm still talking and teaching the motion to, to others and do another set of 10. It's not gonna hurt you to do two sets of each exercise. So it's not just about following along with me, it's about maximizing your time in this session today as well. So we're doing 10, once you've done 10, you can have a break and do another 10, or if you're going along with me, if you're working at the same time as me, we're gonna go straight into a side plank after this. So I've done my 10. I'm going to watch you guys do some. Good job, Lockie. You might just need to bring your heels in a little bit, Lockie. Good read. Job, Taylor. Job, Riley. Good work, mate. Awesome. Good job, HG. Oh, you guys are on the wet ground out there. You're much tougher than me. Job, Nicole. Good stuff. You don't have to tell me when you're done. All good. You do them in your own time. Everyone's doing them at a different pace and you can do a second set if you've got time. Some of them are still, some people are still going. So these sessions, this one, this session in particular, bounce and first step, the two, you know, skill or power specific sessions I run are quality over quantity. Okay. So I'm not, it's not about finishing first. It's not about as many reps as we can possibly get in 30 seconds. It's about quality reps of everything. Okay. So let's go into our side plank now. I think most people are done with their glute bridges. We might have a couple finishing off. Take your time, guys. Good. And we're going to move into a side plank for 30 seconds on each leg. All right. 30 seconds on each side, I should say. So we can either be on our feet or we can be knees stacked. It's totally up to you. So knees stacked. You've still got your hips off the floor. Feet stacked. We've got our hips coming up and our knees coming up. All right. Here we go. Three, two. One, 30 seconds, up we come. Good, good job Sienna, awesome. Zave, well done. Me and Emily working hard there. Good job Caleb Storen, hold strong. You look like you're just relaxing, mate. If you want a little bit of an extra challenge, if we've got some, you know, some under 16s in our session today, feel free to add in like a, a, that top leg can, can be, can do what's called an abduction, which just means we're just taking that leg away. We're splitting that stance a little bit just to add a little bit more of a challenge. We've got five seconds to go in this position here. And come down. Good job, other side. I can see a few of you. You're right, Kobe. You're sort of looking a bit confused. Might be a bit wet where you are. No, you've got your yoga mats. All right, so we come into the other side. So we should be on our left elbow now. And up on our feet or knees in three two, one, here we go, 30 seconds. Good job. Again, if you're looking for that extra little bit of a challenge, we're raising that leg. I really struggle on this leg. What are you doing, Cooper? <laughs> Spotted, let's go, mate, down into the side plank, let's work. Here we go, good job. Good job, Matita. So again, if you want a bit of an extra challenge, arm up, oh, leg up, I can't do the right side for some reason, that right leg does not want to move. So really testing that core strength here. Oh, getting it activated. If you want to add that little abduction, you can. We've got 10 seconds. Oh, wow, it's really raining now. Oh, dear. No dunking for Mossy today. That's a shame. And three, two, one. Come down. Well done, guys. Excellent. All right, so we're up now off our mat. Well done. That's good, everyone. So we're up off our mat. We've got... Oh, sorry. No, we're down. <laughs> Stay on your mat. Sorry. We've got a dead bug rocker and then we're up for our Michael Jackson leans. I apologize. So we're on our back. We've got a rocker and then Michael Jackson leans and we're into our jumping. So a dead bug again is knees directly over our hips. So straight line with our, our thigh here. And we ideally we want to have our shins straight as well. So don't let your shins just hang like that. 
and they're not straight up in the air. They're here, so we make a 90 degree angle with our knees. Arms are straight up, okay? So I look like a dead bug, essentially. I'm on my back, legs are straight. I'm gonna drop my right hand at the same time as I drop my left leg, and I'm gonna come back together, and I'm gonna drop my right leg at the same time as I drop my left hand. Bring them back together. Then from here, I'm just rolling up, touching my heels down, and then rocking back. Okay, we're gonna do 10 of those. So it's a bit of coordination, a bit of core activation as well. Big part of getting this exercise right is that when we come into that, uh, that dead bug, so we're on our back, we wanna feel not a hard pressure, but we want our lower back to have some contact with the, uh, with the mat. So an old coach of mine used to say, imagine like there's a grape, you're in this position, imagine like there's a grape under your lower back and pressure on the grape, but you're not squishing a grape. It's very, uh, it's a very interesting sort of a metaphor, but that's the amount of pressure. You know, imagine there's a lower a grape in your lower back, and we're, we're we're keeping it still. It's staying under our lower back, except for when we rock, but we're not squishing it. So we're not pushing too hard into the ground. That's good. Keep going, guys. You do these at your own pace. We come around and have a look at your form a little bit. Perfect, Caleb. Awesome, good job to Rossi, Grace and Ava. Perfect, well done. John Matita, Zave. Awesome, Tate, well done. Grace and Kobe, really good. Good job, Sienna. Good work, guys, this is good. Laney and Alana, good job. If, you go, if you're finished, we're done with our mat. We are officially, we're done with it for now. So, so you can jump up off your mat, grab a quick drink. And then we've got our you, Michael Jackson leans. Sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who's that? Probably Chase being a smart aleck. Yes, you can jump off your mat, put it to the side. All right. So we've got our Michael Jackson leans. We remember this one from last week. I don't think you guys, not many of you maybe knew who Michael Jackson was. So I was sort of really showing my age. So let's just chuck our mat off to the side. So our leans were, again, we've got, we keep our feet, I'm just gonna lower that camera there. Keep our feet flat on the carpet or concrete or wherever you are. And we're trying to keep our body locked in and nice and straight. So our hips are locked in, our glutes are locked in, our knees are locked in. And we're just leaning forward as far as we can without our heels coming off the ground, like mine just did, and without falling over. Now. You might say, what, what the hell is this exercise for, Mossy? This exercise is, you'll feel it. If you do it properly, you'll feel it in your muscles of your feet. We'll, we'll want to grab into the earth. So in a perfect world, we do this in, in bare feet and you really feel your toes grab into the carpet or the ground. But you'll feel your ankles like strengthen. You'll feel them tighten. And that's what we want. We want to improve that connection with the with the ground that we've got there with our with the muscles of our feet are really important to jumping and to taking off and also to landing as are the muscles of our uh, lower calf and our ankles obviously so michael jackson leans we're just doing 10 of those you can even do them against the wall so i've got my wall here behind me so that you can really test out your balance try and come as far forward as you can and then that way i'm not afraid of sort of falling forward into the wall and then just push off the wall and go again. Just make sure if you're doing that, you've got mum and dad's um, approval. Whoa, whoa. See, so I lost balance there. That's okay. So 10 of these and then we're into our jumps. Coming forward again, try and keep your heels down. You'll feel those toes dig into the earth, try and control it and come back. Great work. All right, if you're done that, take your time, no rush, but some, some people are done. We're into our plyos. So our first exercise is our penultimate. Okay, so what that means is two steps leading up to a jump. So boom, boom, one, two. We're into a penultimate acceleration and a penultimate max touch. So we're going five each side of the penultimate. Uh, yes, Maddie, Maddie's. You had a question. The uh, penultimate um, acceleration is five on each leg and the max touch is two on each leg. So what that looks like, again, for you guys, the penultimate acceleration 
is just, if I start here, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna push off my left foot. Okay, so I'm gonna push off my left foot. So I'm gonna lead with my right foot. So all I'm doing is I might, I might put my arms forward to start, but I'm gonna push out as far as I can off that left foot and explode. So it's all about the first step here to build momentum or that penultimate step. It's, it's really actually gonna be the second last step to the jump. So I'm gonna push off my left, right, left. Okay, and that's all we're doing. We're not jumping yet. We're just working on the mechanics of that build up to a two foot, two foot jump, okay? So I'm gonna do five on my left, five on my right here. So I'm gonna do them at pace. You can watch the first couple and then I want you to go away from the camera and have a look. So I'm gonna push off, okay? So you can see I lead with my hands, so I reach and then I swing back. So I'm right at the point I'm about to take off for a jump. So I push off my left foot. And that's our penultimate buildup. That's our penultimate acceleration. As we start to get more comfortable with this program, particularly for some of you older kids, I'm frozen, am I, Hunter? Am I frozen for anyone else? Give us a thumbs up if I'm frozen. <laughs> I can't. No, I am frozen. No? No, no, okay. Hunter might be your connection, sorry, mate. So five on each leg. So pushing off and we're coming down nice and low. So you're essentially planting that right leg, left leg, and then swinging arms back. So that's what it looks like in slow-mo. So we push out, we stride out, we push off the block there, push off right, left, swing arms back. But we're not taking off just, let, just yet, okay? So now I'm on my right leg, left, right, okay? So I'm pushing off my right, left, right. Another question. Oh, you're getting an echo, are you, Izzy? Okay. Um, don't know why that is. Is anyone else getting an echo? Me talking? No, nah, everyone's okay. Maybe if I'm on loudspeaker, Izzy, if you don't have headphones, it might be because I'm echoing. I don't know, I might be echoing in your shed or whatever. So I'm pushing off right leg now. <laughs> I'm doing five on each leg. All right, all good. That's okay, it might work out. Okay, let's get through that penultimate. So good Ava, good Ava. So we wanna make sure it's explosive. Yep, good Willow, perfect. That's fine, Zave, all good, mate. You just, yeah, just take it easy, mate. Even if you just wanna work on the footwork of this, but do it a little bit slower. If anyone has any injuries, the footwork, you can still do the footwork at a slower pace. It's just, you're not going to be working on that explosiveness. So we can still just go boom, boom, and work on that timing. That arm swing, something that doesn't always get taught to kids. We just assume oh, everyone knows how to jump. Everyone knows how to run. Not necessarily, yeah. So working on this build up, that arm swing as I'm down in that squat, my arms should be back because as I jump, I want to, I need to use that momentum of my upper body to throw myself up, okay? Think about a 100-meter sprinter. Do you, do you ever see 100-meter sprinters with skinny arms? Nah, they're all massive. They're all jacked because that, that movement here is just as important from our upper body to create that arm swing, to create momentum going up. If you're done, have a breather, have a drink. So rest is really important in this one. You can do a second set because I know a few of you are probably waiting around for me to finish and, and things like that. You can do a second set if you are waiting, but make sure you have some rest in between. We don't want to just go two sets back to back without rest. So you can make sure you have a bit of rest. All right, good job. So our next exercise is just building on that. Next exercise building on that. We're only going to do two on each leg. And again, if you've got time, two on each leg is not many reps. It's not meant to be. Is there quality reps? But if you've got time, as long as you take a minute in between sets, I'm happy for you to do as many reps as you like. Usain Bolt, exactly. He's big unit. He's pretty long, so he doesn't, he's not actually as tanky. I'm talking like Asafa Powell and Michael Johnson. Go and look at these guys that won gold medals before Usain Bolt. They're just huge. Usain Bolt's a different beast altogether. So now we're going into our penultimate max touch. So if you are outside, I can see a few of you are outside. It looks like the weather might be better where you are. If you want to, and it's safe for you to jump up and grab the rim or jump up and tap, grab the net or swipe at the net or touch your garage door or your you know, carport 
you know, roof, go for it. Having something measurable to jump up and touch is huge in these exercises and, it's, and it makes the session more fun. Yeah, I'm just in my lounge room here and touch my roof by being on my tippy toe. So I can't really challenge myself indoors. It's actually fully raining here. But if you can jump up, especially you 16s, 18s, but you 12s and 14s as well, if you've got a hoop you can lower, by all means, get up and touch it. So now we're pushing, we're back to our left, but we're actually taking off. So we're pushing left, right, left, and explode up, okay? Explode up as quickly as you can. So now we're really starting to build up. Two on each leg. Two on each leg. Then if you've had time to rest, so now, oh, that was bad. I got the timing wrong. So I'm pushing off right. right. That's what I want. If you've got time to rest for about a minute, because you've already done two on each leg, do a second set, okay? By all means, we need to start building up these exercises. Good wrath. Job, Aaron. Let's go, Lockie. Explode up. Touch that roof. There you go. That's it. That's it. See, straight away, I can see just by aiming at something. Good job, Ben. Just by aiming to get up and touch something, you're giving yourself a little bit more incentive. Good, Talia. Well done, Kobe. Good. Again, make sure you got parental permission to touch roofs and things like that. I don't want... I don't want to be getting angry emails from parents about finger marks on roofs and walls. Good, Lucy. Good, good. Excellent. That's it. The weather's okay there and you can get outside and you can jump up and try and touch that net. Keep going. Excellent. Good, Tom. Good, the Smiths. Let's go. You got to get up higher than dad, girls. Come on. Surely. Here we go. Get up and touch that roof. There you go. Well done. All right. So... That's our, that's our first super set of uh, pliers. So again, you guys can work. If you've got time to do two sets of that while I'm talking about the next exercise, please do a second set. That's, that's no problem at all. We, we need to probably start building towards two sets. <laughs> that's all right, Izzy. If you can't touch the roof, you'll get there eventually. That's, that's perfect if you can't touch it yet because you will be able to touch it. All right, so our next one is a power skip. Now, I think I did these outside. Uh, no, I think I was inside last time. So a power skip is again, we did our A skips when we uh, first started the session. Now we're doing a power skip. So what that looks like, it feels like uh, a bit of a funny exercise, um, but essentially we, I think we can all probably skip, yeah? So let's just start, you just start by practicing that movement, just skipping along to adding that little second ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom in, in between our running. But instead, what we're gonna do now is on every second or third Questions coming through. No worries, Grace, Kobe. See you guys. If you've got to go, what are we? We're eight o'clock pretty much. If anyone has to go, please, please get going. That's fine. If you've got school, you can come back and watch the last bit of it. This is the last exercise we're probably going to do um, because we can't do the outside part today. I, I, I certainly can't, but I'm happy to watch you guys. So um, our power skips. Okay, I'm going to do every second or third step. So if I'm skip, skip. And the third is a takeoff. Okay, that's how much space I've got to be able to do it. See you later, guys. So if, if you've got more space, but I'm going to go, so I'm going to go one, two, and then the third, I'm jumping up off one leg as high as I can. Okay, take off on that one leg. Make sure you do the same amount on each leg. So we've got six total. Let's do three power skips on each leg. So three power skips on each leg. So you might do two skips. So if I start, I know that if I start with my right foot, right, left, then I'm taking off on my right leg. So if I go right skip, left skip, right power skip, okay? Here we go. Right skip, left skip, right power skip. Now we're doing the left side. So I'll start with my left. Left skip, right skip, left power skip. So we're really building into that explosive takeoff. Try and get up and touch the roof or whatever you've got. Left, right, left power. So we're building a little bit of momentum. Ideally, you'd have more space than what I have here. But if you don't, you can still do it. Just a little left, right. Take off as high as you can. Good work, guys. Good, Taylor. Perfect. Awesome. Take off. So remember, we want height as high as we can get, not as far as we can get. 
So we're not trying to jump across the room. We're trying to take off one leg and get as high as we can. Good. And again, there's no reason why if you've got a hoop or you've got something there and it's low enough, you know, grab a basketball. Yeah, by all means. If it's dry where you are or you want to do this again later in the day today, get a basketball in your hands, hold onto it, left, right, left, try and dunk it. Or a tennis ball. Who made that point last week? That was a terrific point last week by someone. I think it was Ava or something. I forget who it was. Terrific point. Tennis ball. Use different size balls. If you've got a... So for me, uh, I'm not a great athlete, so I don't, I don't dunk on a 10-foot rim ever. Um, I, I can... Nine and a half, nine and three quarters, I can get a full-size basketball. I, probably an inch below or two inches below 10 feet. I can get a tennis ball, right? So that's what I work on. So if I'm doing basketball specific, I'll lower it to nine and a half feet and I can dunk with a basketball because it's bigger. It's harder to get over the top of the rim. Um, if you can't palm a basketball, which a lot of you maybe can't, then just practicing that athletic movement with a tennis ball or a smaller ball. It doesn't have to be a tennis ball, something you can just hold in your hand. Practicing that movement and still getting up to the rim and jamming it in, even on an eight foot or seven foot or six foot, depending on your age, is still going to be really good for you. Okay, last exercise we're going to do now is just our, our one leg or our one foot approach touch. So this is all dependent on your space. Um, if you've got a hoop, if you've got, um, it's dry outside and you want to attempt dunking on the rim, this is not yet our basketball specific, but you can. All we're doing is we're literally taking two or three steps. So I'll get into the picture. One, two, three, and up as high as you can. So it's just... Now you might take six steps, you might take 10 steps, I don't mind. It depends on the space that you have. So we're doing two on each leg, depending on the space you have. I don't have much, I'm in my lounge room. So I'm only gonna take say one, two, three, and I'm off, right? And make sure you do two on each leg. So if you're taking two or three steps, you lead with your right, left, right, left, and I'm up. Make sure you swap if you've only got that much space. Now lead with my left, Left, right, left, and I take off my right. Make sure you do two really good reps on each leg. Get up as high as you can. If you're done and you're waiting, I'm going to see a few people sitting down. Again, you can have a break and then do another set. Good work, guys. Yeah, Reed. See, that's a perfect little basketball there to be working on dunking. You've got a hoop that you can lower. Again, I, I don't want to spend your parents' money, but there are hoops that we got, mini hoops, hoops that we got from Kmart. They lower to six foot, I think, which is basically like my height. Um, <clears throat> so even I reckon most of our under 12s, I reckon a lot of our under 12s would be able to dunk on a hoop. Like if you were, you'd be able to touch the top of my head. Um, that six foot hoop and it's I think it's thirty dollars at Kmart delivery, you know, and they're they're tiny. They're, they're the size of that boxing bag there. You know, they um they, they they come in and we use them for mini hoops, but they could be perfect for in your shed or even in a in a play area inside to use with a tennis ball and do some practicing dunking. And then obviously you can they go up to I think they go from six foot up to eight. And then obviously most most home basketball systems go down to eight foot these days so it's it's a good way to bridge the gap right now if you can't quite dunk it or you can't quite touch the rim on an eight foot hoop and you don't have a hoop that goes down to you know five or six and that can be a really good option good job matt nice i'll see you there it's just the moonwalk mate talking about michael jackson before all right guys so that's the end of our session that i'm actually going to be doing the exercises so if you guys have to run now we're at about we're about five past eight. So we usually go for another 10 minutes where we would do um, some dunking outdoors, but I'm just looking out my front window now and it's still trickling. It's still actually raining here, um, but I've got, unfortunately the bricks that I've got where my hoop is, is, um, is, is they're pretty slick. Um, so I don't really want to encourage anyone, but if you're, if it's dry there, for whatever reason, if it hasn't rained, if you're in Frankston or uh, you're somewhere else and it hasn't rained and you want to do um, some dunking, please do. If you want to do the, the next two exercises are our two foot takeoffs. So five on each side. See you, HG. See you, girls. Awesome to see you. So if you, if you want to do your two foot takeoffs, remember you've got a basketball, tennis ball, or a small ball, depending on your hoop. 
And it's just that same movement as that penultimate touch, but you've got the ball in your hands. So that takes away, it takes away a little bit the ability to create momentum, okay? So when you're two foot, you don't get to swing your arms as much. You do get a little bit of arm swing, but you're obviously not swinging the ball right back behind you like that. <laughs> the only reason I can palm this is because it's flat. Um, so you're having to sort of use that. Or if you've got a tennis ball, then you've got that full arm swing you can go for. Um, we're doing five on each leg of those. So you guys, I can see a few of you saying goodbye. Thank you guys. Remember, we got 4.30 today if you want to do mobility. Um, and then we're doing five on each leg, one foot takeoff. So again, if you're in a safe area, it's not wet, you're not going to slip over because if I was outside doing this right now, I'd be, you'd be seeing me slide all over the place. But I want to see you take one or two, like build up steps and take off one leg, okay? Take off off one leg, work on that dunking or wait until the weather's better. See you later, Izzy. See you, Alessandra. So, or wait until the weather is better. Um, I think later on this afternoon, maybe lunchtime or after, it's meant to be better. See you, Mia. See you, Emily. Um, so get outside and practice that sport-specific stuff later on. Or if it's good weather there, do it now. All right, guys. So that's the end of our session. If anyone is doing any outdoor dunking, I can't really see anyone doing it at the moment. So um, I'm happy to stick around and give feedback. Otherwise, do it, in, do, it, do it later on when the weather's a bit better and it's not as slippery outside. Thank you for joining me, guys. Good on your wrap. See you, Hannigan. Thank you, guys. Thanks for this morning. Might see you guys this afternoon. See you, Lucas. See you, Jenkins. Thank you. You're welcome, Zara. See ya. See you later. See you, Dan. Thanks, Jared. See you, Cooper. See ya. See ya, Aiden. Good on you, mate. Thank you. Good on you, Cooper. See you, mate. Well done. All right, guys. See you later. Thank you. Good on you, Aaron. Thank you. Might see you later. The flexibility or mobility flex later. See you, guys. See ya, Ava. Good on you, mate. See ya. All right, guys. Have a good day.